By now, you've probably heard my magic wand story. It's a brand that's been part of my personal journey for more than 20 years. But no matter how many times I sing magic wands praises, I'll never be able to fully capture the story of this incredible brand. Well, now journalist and author Kate Sloan just completed a limited audio series documenting the history and impact that Magic Wand has created over the last 56 years. It's called Making Magic. And the series chronicles Magic Wand's incredible brand story through interviews with nearly 40 experts, performers, business owners, educators, and fans. So I got a sneak preview of the series. And what I loved is that Kate weaves together snippets from all their interviews into this amazing story arc. She covers Magic Wand's journey from a appliance store massager to its legendary influence on culture and sexual independence. And it's all just fascinating. The first episodes of Making Magic are available now at makingmagicseries.com or on all popular podcast platforms. Just search for Making Magic or visit makingmagicseries.com today. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. I'm Dr. Emily, and on today's show, I'm joined by my friend and incredible food creator, Chef Amber Cottle, to talk about the sensual sides of food, from cooking to eating, with a few ideas to use on Valentine's Day or all year round. Topics include how food can be truly healing for the mind, body, and soul. Seeing the sensual side of eating, especially since so many foods look like penises and vulvas. Think about it. Power to the pussy. Why body acceptance from your head to your toes and everything in between helps you in and out of the bedroom. And if you're cooking for a hot date, what foods are a hell yes and what foods are a definite no-no. All this and more. Thanks for listening. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. The women know about shrinkage. Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, check out sexwithemily.com. All social media, we are Sex with Emily across the board. Intentions with Emily. Okay, guys, for each show, join me in setting an intention. What was it about this show that drew you to it? Like maybe you think, oh God, you know, I actually want to have a sexy Valentine's Day and I want to find some foods that I can cook that are, that I can make that are easy, sensey, and sexual. Or you're maybe you're just trying to be healthier and you want to do it um, without all the distractions and without it being difficult. This show is going to help you because when we feel healthier, we feel sexier. My intention is to give you ideas to make food less of a hassle and more enjoyable and definitely sexier and let you know how that could help you in the bedroom as well. Okay, enjoy the show. I am so excited to welcome my guest, Amber Cottle. She's a chef based in Los Angeles. I like to call her Chef Amber. You can call her Chef Amber as well. Yes. Chef Amber LA. A Chef Amber LA. You can find her on Instagram and Twitter. And she is a an incredible woman. We've, we've gotten to know each other in the yes. last year or so. And... Amber, I've never met anybody as as passionate about food and mm-hmm. as and that you care so much and you put so much love into the work that you do and the yes. food you do. And she has an amazing restaurant um, in Hermosa Beach. Thank you. Um, the Source Cafe. I have not been there. Oh but my I God. heard that it's like it's just like you. Yeah. It's like sex and vibes, <laughs> delicious nourishing food, and yes. you feel so much better, sexier, and healthier yes. when you leave. And I've cooked for you a lot, so that's just a she, flavor. Okay, <laughs> so this is who Amber is. She actually, we had recently met, but you brought the dessert to my birthday party. Yes, I brought some adaptogen sexy balls, basically. They, she brought the sexiest balls yeah. to my birthday. Yeah. And they were delicious and healthy. And literally, they were the leftovers that I kept eating. I was like, we got to hide these. They were great. And then she made a meal for me recently. And you yes. just, the way you the way you, you move through the world is just how you you are with your business and your food. So thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm so excited. Chef Thanks Amber, for having me. Of course. So we were going to talk about... 
just some sexy things that we could do. I mean, starting out really about, well, let's first off, we're going to get a little Valentine's Day recipes, yeah. but really these are just things that people can do that are sexy. Exactly. Um, and that food essential, but your like philosophy about food. Can we just talk about your philosophy? Because I think you come at it from a very unique place. Yeah. So I believe that what we put in our bodies matters right now. And I'm so passionate about inspiring people to nourish nourish their bodies with amazing, beautiful, organic food. And I think that one of my philosophies is slowing down and really honoring the act of eating and what we put in our bodies. And I feel like when I'm feeling my bodies, that when I'm feeling my body with amazing food, that I feel strong, beautiful, and sexy and healthy. And then it's just a mind-body-soul connection. Everything I make, I make with intention. Like you said, I put so much love into my food. Um, But you feel it. It feels so good. So um, I love talking about also, I want to change the stigma around the word healthy when it comes to food, because I think that's that healthy, Emily, sometimes people think, oh, I'm going to be deprived and I have to go on a diet. And it's going to be boring or it's, it's steamed tofu and broccoli. And it's like, screw that. No, I, you can make beautiful, sexy food. And I believe that sexy is the new healthy. And I love telling people that, like, if your food doesn't taste as good as sex, you're eating the wrong food. Absolutely. And I would have thrown in. I don't know if we're allowed to cuss on here. <laughs> yes, so, OK, cuss. then you're eating the wrong fucking food. I mean, you are. It's and true. so think about when I cooked you dinner a couple of weeks uh. ago and we sat down in the moaning at the table was. We were all moaning. Everybody's like, oh, my God. And like the saltiness and the sweetness and just the act of eating slow, right, and actually honoring and looking at the food. I mean, it feels so good. And then it just, I don't know, it feels so good. You know that it's exactly. And the way your presentation. And then we sat there and you're right. It was the salty and the sweet and the freshness. And just knowing you, too, that you had made it. And you're, oh, my God. Amber, it really is a gift. So, but, okay. It is difficult, though, in my brain, because I am not a chef. Yeah. I am nowhere near a chef. And being healthy for me sometimes can be a struggle. So how do we make healthy not not a struggle? So stressful. Yeah, well, it, it is, so is stressful. stressful. It is. And I know you're so busy. And I feel like for me, I, I mean, we could do a podcast. We could do a whole show on we this. Will. But, um, you know, setting yourself up for, sec- for success. For, for, se- the, for sex. <laughs> so where's my mind? Get- I'm here with sex with Emily. So it's like there's it my mind. It happens. Um, setting your day up. The night before for the next day, whether that means I'm going to Erewhon and I'm grabbing breakfast, lunch and dinner or whether that means I'm ordering something, have a plan or else one, you're not going to eat all day or you're going to start shoving stuff into your hole unconsciously, right. mindlessly. And that's where we get ourselves in trouble. And then you're depleted and tired and bloated and cranky. I mean, at least that's how I am. So for me, I plan my meals the next day. Even as a chef, I'm around food all day. I have I'm the opposite. I have food all over the place. So for me, I'm like mindlessly snacking all day. And then I feel like crap at the end of the day. So for me, planning, 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 it takes so much willingness, so much effort. But it's like the biggest act of self-love that I do for myself. Um, I find like in our own industries, we don't like take care of ourselves. So people are like, people are like, oh, you probably like sit around and cook all day at your house. And your refrigerator at your house is like so full. If you come over to my house, it's completely empty, right? (laughs) Because you're around food all day. I'm I'm around food all day. So I just have to plan it. So if you have a meal delivery service, like that's a 2020. 20 goal for me at the end of this year for Source Cafe. We're going to do it. But if you Source have Source Cafe in Hermosa Beach, yeah. everyone should check that out. Yeah. And if you, if everything about Chef Amber, you could also find in the show notes at sexwithemily.com. That's where everything is. You just look at the, the toolbar, it says notes, and then there you go. And then you find <laughs> it. Everything. Click through and check out her restaurant and all of her beautiful recipes. So, yes. what about cooking? What about in a relationship? A sex, yeah. anything. It doesn't have to be like yeah. a relationship. But how do we, how do we cook foods that are like sexy? Let's sexy say for Valentine's. And- Sensual. Yeah, that maybe that's not too challenging. Yeah, okay, so let's just talk about Sexy the foods. act of um, sensual eating, right? So take, take the papaya. Mm. I mean, it, if you slice that open, it looks like a vulva. It's beautiful. So you could just have that on a platter for your lover and just scoop out the inside of the papaya. Just the act of eating the papaya is a sens- it's sensual, which could turn into se- it's sexy. Also, look at the artichokes. So artichokes are known for their aphrodisiac qualities. Oh. So steamed artichoke dipped in some really creamy coconut butter or ghee. But think about the act of like stripping the flesh from the leaves with your teeth, Emily. That is sensual. That like, is so just, hot. You're right. right. It's you, hot. You're I mean, your you're teeth? scraping your teeth. You're eating the flesh. That is sensual. Um, oyster 
oysters, of course. Oysters are known for their aphrodisiac qualities because did you know that they can change from male to female and back? Therefore, they can understand uh, feminine and masculine and experience the, the love of feminine and masculine. I know. Crazy, right? Really? And I so, know. And they're slippery sense. and they're salty and like they're sensual just to look at. And when the that flesh hits your mouth and slides down it your throat, it's very and sensual. About all the fleshy so part of those it. are like fun. I mean, those are every day, like steamed artichoke, right? Um, oysters, avocados. Uh, the Mayans and the Aztecs believed that they increase uh, sexual desirability and also helps with erectile dysfunction. So avocados and, and they're a great brain food. Okay. But... So, I mean, gosh, I mean, just start with something. Forget Viagra, right? Right. Just eat a lot like, of avocado. Just, no, eat a lot of avocado. You to throw away Viagra, but it, and wouldn't, asparagus, wouldn't that be amazing? Like, asparagus is another favorite dish that I make. Like, I know everybody's like, oh, it makes my pee sting, but it's so cleansing. It's a diuretic. It's amazing. But it also um, has, um, helps with erectile dysfunction. That's what they say. They but say. Think, think of the um, the shape of the asparagus, the tip. I mean, it's, it's pretty phallic. So everything's like, either, there's right? so many phallic foods, and then there's right. a lot of foods that look like vulvas. Exactly. And so take the asparagus, dip it in some raw cashew cheese. I'll give the viewers, the you know, the listeners a recipe and dip that asparagus in the, the cashew cream. Very easy to make. Um, serve that with some oysters. You've got a steamed artichoke. I mean, have some avocado. And then I'm going to give you an amazing chocolate avocado mousse, which I make daily. I mean, it's very easy. Throw it in the blender. It's avocado, raw cacao, maca, which, hey, maca is the root for libido. Serve that with some berries, which berries are the symbol for love. It's Valentine's Day. Yes. Right. Strawberries. And then the papaya, like there's your meal. Right. And that doesn't just have to be on Valentine's Day. So I think that slowing down. That is our meal. Right. That's my meal tonight. (laughs) Aren't you hungry? (laughs) We knew we would get so hungry with you here. But I think it's true. I mean, we have to like, because it also like learning to like cook together or share a meal for ourselves because we so we just forgot the art of cooking. Like we, we don't, we forget the, the art, art of, of and, cooking. And it, it is self love. It's and nourishment. It and is. Love. It yes. is. Now, what about though other like aphrodisiacs? Like, do you ever or things? We talked a little bit about that, but even in, like in your restaurant or cooking mm. for people, are there certain like meals in particular? besides like this that are particularly sexy like we were talking about earlier like have you ever been on a date with someone that was like they weren't eating sexy or they oh, yeah. were like oh my god hunched over their plate or shoveling oh food in or stabbing their yeah. their steak with a fork yeah I love seafood I think sushi and like raw bars are really sexy and sensual that's like a favorite date for me also it doesn't cause any bloating or gassiness so if there's sexy time afterwards you know you don't want to go to and have a big plate of beans and, and Mexican food is not like se- sexy food for me. I, I mean, always say that. The sour cream and the beans and like the corn. I mean, it's like it leads to a lot of indigestion and bloating and gas and the garlic and the onion. So I think um, I love sushi. I think sushi are the hottest dates. Same. I think they're so hot. I love sushi dates. And then you get dates. into the, o- the uni and like just and everything's just so sensual. It is. You know? You're right. You're absolutely and you're like closer to each other and yeah. you can like even like feed each other. But like cooking together in the kitchen and um, I, I don't know, making a bunch of fresh um fresh um, roasted vegetables with nut creams. Nut cream sounds bad, but cheese creams and stuff is like my favorite. Wow, Amber. Yeah. Oh, I'm just like really, really hungry yeah, right now. I that. know. What should we avoid though? Because people always want to know what foods yeah. do we have to avoid? I would avoid onion and garlic just because they're so, you know, pungent for breath. And also, you know, the beans and any type of um, lentils, beans, if they haven't been prepared right, if they haven't been soaked overnight to remove some of um, phytic acid, which can help um, that actually will cause bloating and stuff. But if you eat the wrong beans, stay away from beans, legumes um, before a a hot night. Yeah. I mean, rice is much a much better option if you want some carbs. (laughs) There's so much. Yeah. Okay. This is and Christopher. Veggies. So cruciferous veggies for a lot of people, the cauliflowers, um, broccoli, broccoli family. Yeah, can, Jamie was going to make broccoli lo- the yeah, other night. We were like, she had a date and we're like, no. It's not as sexy. I know a lot of, and also <laughs> sun choke. So sun choke actually in the culinary business, we call them gas chokes. They're full of inulin so much fiber and certain people can have a major reaction. So like if I'm cooking for like a big party or a sex, like there's no way I'm cooking sunchokes and cruciferous veggies because okay. somebody's going to be walking around like complaining about the gas. This is such good information. Yeah. I mean, Amber, yeah. how did you get into this? How did you get to be this this human that is making all this beautiful food? You know, from my health journey, Emily, I had a health crash probably eight years ago and inspired me to get out of the crazy restaurant, uh, 80 hour a week restaurant chef. And I was 
is eating too much sugar and exercising too much and partying too much, the whole thing. And I crashed and I opened up Source Cafe because I wanted a safe place that I could eat and that my family and friends could eat. And so seven years later, and then honestly, my creativity comes from what I can't eat. So I have like some adrenal fatigue stuff and I have some hormone stuff. So it's like if I can take maca and ashwagandha and avocado and I feel so strong, that's it's inspires me and pushes me a chef daily. Um, uh, and that's where my creative recipes come from. I mean, if I could eat whatever I wanted, if I had like a normal body, whatever yeah. that means, I don't know how creative I would I would be. Well, isn't it true that from our, our I guess our, our greatest challenges oh. comes like our creativity. And there it is. And the gold and the light. Yeah. It's where all the light yeah. shines. It's where the things that we struggle yeah. through. Yeah. I'm it's writing true. a cookbook and I want to write another book about my whole like relationship with food and, and that. So well, yeah, yeah. No, let's talk about your, yeah. your, 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 relationship with your food and how it's impacted your relationship yeah. with your body and how you've shifted that because yeah. I'm talking to Chef Amber Chef Amber LA you can find her on Instagram and Twitter maybe people need help with their Valentine's Day meal plan yeah because even if you're not yeah. they don't have to be like they don't might not want to eat cacao or they don't any yeah. kind of meal any place yeah that would be sexy Amber can help you whip it together she's yeah. gonna help all of us here yeah so body and food like body how- and food we could do hours on I this know, one. I know. Oh my god! But I guess how about like sexually? How you have felt since you've gotten? I know you hate the word healthy. Yeah, that's okay. But that's but good. since you've changed the way you eat. Yeah. And I know you, you've done a lot of inside out, yes. from inside out. But how do you think it's impacted how you are sexually now is how you were 10 years ago? OK, well, I would say, first of all, when we nourish our bodies and I've been nourishing my body with the right food, healthy food, for sure. Um, I feel more energized. I sleep better. I feel stronger. I feel healthier. I feel sexier. My light, my chi is brighter. You know, if I'm walking around with this voice in my head, I feel fat. I shouldn't eat that. There's too many calories, even if it comes to broccoli and an apple energetically that energetic weight is heavy I feel dark and now it's like I can eat what I want mindfully I sit down I honor even if it's a brownie I always say this to people like have an apple and a brownie and I have an apple and I'm like oh maybe I shouldn't eat it It has too much sugar like how many calories that's going to energetically make me feel heavy versus that brownie like sit down and eat the brownie like I'm going to honor this brownie I love this my body wants this raw cacao right now it's going to make me feel amazing and honestly when I fluctuate in weight I can be a little bit heavier and people say, oh my God, you look so good. You look, you look like you've lost weight and it's it I haven't lost weight like I've lost maybe that energetic heaviness and feel so much more embodied and sent I do I feel sexier sensual confident um, and letting go of those voices and that judgment that we have yeah. um, what's your trick for letting go of those voices we've been talking about that a lot how do you let go of those so for me Amber. Emily I started um, this practice I've been sharing on Instagram it's it's a mirror cra- a, a mirror practice okay and it's best to do naked but some people when I say it tear them and I look you look straight in the in the mirror at in your eyes make eye contact and just start I love you I love your butt I love your boobs you're so gorgeous some people can't get that far so maybe you just start to say some affirmations or stuff you're grateful for and naked is the best especially if you're having a loud voice day it's even better like I still have them and I get straight in the mirror and I'm like look at this gorgeous body that works 24 7 for you every day and when I if I'm driving down the road or something's crazy and I start to feel that voice come in I shift it and try to change it to something positive and opposite thought it's hard I mean I'm human and it's once you're in that low it's hard to like uh, climb to the top but right yeah. no I found that too that, yeah. that that looking in your body and looking in the mirror because some of so many of us are afraid to even you know look in the mirror naked oh, yeah. we talk about looking even looking at your vulva oh, look at your vulva like there's You've done some vulva gazing right tons of vulva gazing <laughs> thanks thanks to our good friend Dolly we are friend Dolly we sexological love Dolly. body work like yeah. so much we gotta yeah. take a look so it's so true looking yeah. in the mirror because a lot of we get a lot of calls um, you know from women but I think men can I know men can benefit from this yeah. as well and it's like if you hit your body there is something to be said for like looking at yourself in the mirror yeah. dancing around like being naked but even if you can't find the positive thing sometimes it's like, it's so hard but I'm not going to say I love my butt if I hate yeah. my butt. What helps, what I found also helps is finding something that you, that you do love yeah. or kind of neutralizing it. Yeah. Like if it's, um, if it's like all hate, you could be like, it's, but it helps me walk to work. Right. Or a, like, you I have know, a strong body can, that I can strong body. take care of my kids. I just birthed two children. Yeah, like, I birthed the children. Right. I built the humans out of it, my vagina. Exactly. How could I be mad at this body? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's so powerful. And I think that, yeah, I mean, we're all so damn hard on ourselves. Mm-hmm. We are. <laughs> we truly are. But it's like, you know, I feel like it is, um, 
the more we can just stop the thoughts, recognize yes. the thoughts. I love when you talk about like being in the car. Like that's when a lot of the yeah, thoughts can happen and just kind of shifting it. I like to also focus on the senses, things that I'm feeling yes. in the moment. What I'm hearing, what yes. I'm tasting, what I'm smelling. No, that's good. I just good. wish I was tasting Feed one on, of your balls. Oh right my now. god! And I have to your say, co- your cacao balls. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> I love those balls. I know they're so good. When we're in our shit and in our head, for me, it's not about my body. It's not about how big my ass is. It's really not about the food. It's something deeper, and it's a good uh, whack on the head that I need to go inward and really look at really what's. Bo- I mean, what's really bothering me? Why am I like attacking my ass today? It's not, it's not about my butt. Right. So it's really something I- inward, right? I'm just trying to shove shove that under the carpet with all these other self sabotage well, thoughts. Because the, there'll always yeah. be more thoughts there'll that are going to distract you. So, There's always going to be more yeah. that comes in. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a quick break and we come back more with Chef Amber. Amber Cottle. You can find her at Chef Amber LA on Instagram and Twitter. I love that you're here. She's She owns the Source Cafe by the beach in Hermosa. Yes. Sounds like such a lovely place, the yes. beach. You get to see the beach and be I at the do. beach. And then Hatton Beach, we're um, in the middle of opening up our second. So When's yeah, that open? Uh, end of March, end of March. Oh my God, that's so, so soon. And I will have wine and beer right now. Um, I don't have wine and beer, so I will have organic and biodynamic wine, kombucha, sexy mocktails. Mocktails are really hot right now. What's a mocktail? A mocktail is a non-alcoholic. Um, okay. So it's it looks like a cocktail, but it's beautiful. And we're we're going to fuse a lot of adaptogens. So I'm actually one of my favorite drinks because I don't, I'm not drinking right now. So I'll do kombucha with a little coconut water and maybe whisk in a little maca or um, ashwagandha and like top it with sparkling water and wow. a mint leaf. I mean, hello, it's amazing. <laughs> People don't even know, everyone know what all of that is, but I've heard all those things are good. Adaptogens, adaptogens. Uh, adaptogens. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, what about feeding your partner? What are some foods? Okay, so we've been talking a lot, Amber, about people feeding, um, doing a sexy night at home mm-hmm. with a blindfold. Yeah. Have you ever fed sexy foods? Because we want I people to have killer dates this year. Yes. Or do something different in the bedroom. Ooh, what could I they love whip that. up that would be easy you know and fun and sexy? Okay, so... It- with the blindfold and stuff, it's so fun. A lot of different like creams and stuff. So for instance, like the avocado chocolate mousse, I'm telling you, it's not complicated. It's very easy. But to to tease that on the end of a strawberry or let let your partner smell it first because it's you're oh, gonna get all senses. the senses. The senses is really fun. I like to do like three or four different like kind of cups. You could have some like mashed berries for like a fast jam. And then you could have um, your avocado mousse. Um, I also do just like a cashew cream, which is, these sound complicated, but they're very easy. How do you make a cashew cream? Do you just whip up cashews? You just literally um, blend up cashews with a little bit of water. I, if you want to make it sweet, put some maple in it. If you want to make it savory, put a little bit of salt and lemon, like one of them can go with the asparagus. You can dip the asparagus. That's really easy to feed. Um, but, you know. Th- so healthy. Yeah, it's healthy. Oh, and none of these will bloat you out. So I always have to think about that, too. <laughs> and chocolate's good, too. And chocolate's Dark amazing chocolate. because it's actually calming, but also energizing. And it helps um, us adapt to outside stressors. And it releases the happy hormone. Yeah. How does all this food help with stress? We're all so goddamn stressed out. How does yeah. the, food, the food you eat impact your stress? Yeah. So I think that the way we eat impacts our stress. So if we're running around and standing and driving like me, I'm very guilty. I mean, my nervous system is compl- is not digesting that food. I'm completely stressed when I eat it. Or if I'm on an email. Email, a hard email and eating, not great. Um, and also processed food. I mean, processed food, we can't digest it. It stresses the body. It has a lot of inflammation. So Anything that comes prepackaged. Yeah. Pr- yeah. I mean, unless you're at like Erewhon. <laughs> Because they love have Erewhon. Like, right, the addicted, yeah, or my cafe, everything, a lot of, you know. At your you cafe, the source pre, cafe. Uh, pre-packaged, but yes, the processed GMO stuff. Yeah, be careful, be it careful. Really it is. will I mean, stress people, your body. Well, the thing is, if we are unhealthy in our bodies, we are eating too much, we're drinking too much, we're smoking, we're not eating. Because, you know, uh, listen, we're not all going to be, sometimes we'll eat a processed food. It's of not course, a, a processed food. Yeah. Processed foods, but but really it's about, you know, this consciousness around, around that, what we're putting in our bodies and exercise and food, we're going to feel better. We're going to feel yes. sexier. We're going to we're going to want you know. We're it, going to feel. You're going to want if you're feeling your body with awesome, amazing food. You're going to want to go to the gym. You're going to want to go for that walk or do something else better for yourself. If I have a weekend where I didn't plan my food and I'm eating mindlessly, I'm going to feel fatigued, bloated, 
now I'm now here comes the voices. Oh, I ate too much. Or, you know, and then there goes my light. I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to take a walk or I'm going to the gym right. for the wrong reason. I'm not going because I want to feel strong. I'm going to the gym because, oh, I've got to lose those pounds. And there goes the voice again. You know, how long does it take to shift that? Because people oh. who have never eaten healthy or they've yeah. never started. But I just think the fact that you've gone from that yeah. place to being like a lot of people can can it's recognize a, that. I mean, I've, I've been a in journey. those eating. It is it's, a journey. It's a daily journey for me. It's a daily journey. It's just, it's being so mindful and just striving for that alignment and that balance like every single day. Where do you feel like you are the most mindful? Oh, wow. And have um, you learned to be more mindful? Yeah. So one thing that I try to do is when I'm washing the dishes, I wash the dishes. When I'm brushing my teeth, I brush my teeth. Um, those acts, I stopped multitasking as much. Now I'm a still a guilty multitasker. Um, but my morning routine has helped me be the most mindful. I have a very, very uh, non-negotiable, intense, sacred morning routine. What is that? And um, well, I practice transcendental meditation. So, um, and I just got my advanced training. So now it's 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 about thirty ish minutes. And um, then I dry brush, and I've done some jade egg practice in the morning. Some jade yoni egg. jade egg. Okay. Um, I'll oil pull. I do some tai chi chanting. I mean, it's intense. But how long is it? You know, right now I'm working with a coach. He's like. Try to just keep it under an hour, chef. Like it gets a little compulsive. <laughs> chef, yeah, yeah, chef. Yeah, it's like, please, like just an hour, <laughs> right? Or my business partner's like, how long was your morning routine? Like an hour's good for me. And if you're out there listening, you're like, oh God, that sounds intense. I, I don't meditate. Just start with five minutes. But Or a minute. Or even. a That's minute. That's helped me some days. Just a minute. Or just even brushing my teeth using the two minute timer. Yes. And being mindful that entire See? time. That helps. Beautiful. Because I like, I don't want, and then it gets me into the mind. I'm just brushing my teeth. I'm just brushing my teeth because otherwise you're going off on all the thoughts all day. And that's where I'm the most mindful. And when I'm cooking, when I'm creating, I'm just in my zone, in my flow, I'm in the kitchen. It just, something takes over me and I just start creating. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about the jade eggs? Tell me, I've, I've never done the full, we're talking about these, the eggs that you put into your vagina Yeah. and there's, they are, it's kind of like kegel balls too, but they awaken Mm -hmm. your energy. They move, they, do you tell me what they've done Yeah. I mean, I am starting back on my practice again and it really helps me feel embodied, get connected to my womb, that chakra, to my pussy, like really get connected. Um, I used to do it a lot. It, It just builds so much confidence. Um, and yeah. how did it build confidence? Oh, I think being able for, for a while, I would kind of lose connection with my pussy and that, that center, um, and helping me breathe through and just remembering, like asking her and like connecting with her in the morning and having the jade egg. I don't know there's just something empowering about feeling embodied. I mean, when I feel embodied and really embodied and confident, I mean, I can conquer, I can conquer anything. And then my creativity is like through the roof. When you actually do all the things when in your I, practice yeah. or, or just wake up your yeah, yeah. And then I, vagina. I'm pussy. loving, I'm loving People my in new, our world say like our sex educator. Say pussy. I yeah. don't even say pussy. Oh, okay. I mean, you can, no, I like when you say pussy. It yeah. awakens everybody in the room. Okay. <laughs> everybody driving is like pussy. Pussy. But we can, yeah. I mean, really, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Brian kind of got a little nervous. <laughs> got a little Brian. Oh no! Okay, where's Brian? No, it's good. We're like national. <laughs> it's fine. It is. It is. Okay. Okay. It's power to the pussy. A power to the pussy. Yeah. And I love. I have my crave necklace on. Oh. So how is the Vesper neck? Do I, I love it. Um. So mine, I chose. I come first because. For for me, I feel like it's okay. It's finally taken me forever to realize it's okay to put myself first. I'm allowed to be self-absorbed and self-centered and selfish and have boundaries and put my needs first. And not just in the bedroom, in life, boundaries, saying no. Like, no, I can put myself first because if I honor myself, then I'm going to be able to show up in the world, be of service and take care of others. Absolutely. And I'm not going to, yeah. So, so have it, you mean like when you're with a partner in the past, maybe you would not have, you've been more about their orgasm absolutely. than your own? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The pleaser, the giver, the pleaser, the giver. And that's why psychological body work opened my eyes to that and just different work. Yeah. To it help really realize. did, right? To, to oh, learn like so what, much. to be able to ask for what you want. And to receive and ask, receive and ask. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Exactly. And pleasure is well, our birthright. It. Pleasure is our birthright. <laughs> right? I love it. And I love that you have it out, which the, yeah. I come first. We're talking about our necklace. We haven't talked about it in a little bit. Their vibrator necklace that you can get sex with emily.com slash Vesper or go to our site. It has like a, you can get I come first, meditate, masturbate, manifest, or turn me on. Yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm giving one to one of our dear friends tonight. Uh, yeah, she's going to be so I love excited. it. Say happy birthday <laughs> yeah. to her. Oh, Amber. Okay. I have to ask you. Okay. Well, First of all, Amber, everyone can find you at Chef Amber. Yes. uh, ChefAmber.com. Yes. Chef Amber LA, Instagram and Twitter. And check out the Source Cafe in Hermosa. 
I have to ask you the five questions we ask okay. all of our guests. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Your biggest turn on. Ooh, I like when somebody breathes on the back of my neck. Biggest turn off. Smacking food. <laughs> what makes good sex? Connection, eye contact, and eye contact. Something you would tell your younger self about sex and relationships. Slow down. You do not have to rush and really just know that you are worth it and you can honor yourself. <laughs> honor yourself and you are worth it. That's it. <laughs> Number one sex tip. Ooh. It comes to me not rushing and really getting into your body. I love it. Like, don't um, skip on foreplay. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Thank you, Chef Amber, for being Thanks here. So, Thanks so much Thanks for having everyone. me. I um, love you. If you're on hold, I love you too, honey. <laughs> if you like the show, well, rate us, review us. Five stars we love. Wherever you're listening, whatever platform you're listening on, Google Play, Spotify, iTunes. Hey, leave us a comment there. It helps. We appreciate you. And thanks to my awesome team. We love you. Ken, Kristen, Elisa, Brian, producer Jamie, and Michael. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.